It is estimated that more than 60% of Italian cornfields have been attacked by wild boars, causing a great loss in the output and the economic value of agriculture. To protect their cornfields, what countermeasures did farmers take? Join me to learn new methods of dealing with invasive wild boars in the video below. Millions of acres of cornfields in Tuscan, Italy, are suffering heavy damage due to a sudden attack from wild boars, causing heavy losses to the agricultural economy but also affecting the spirit of the Italian farmer. Do you know what will happen when the combination of the native Sioux Scrofa species and the wild boar species introduced from the Eastern Europe invade this land? Simply put, you understand that they're called invasive wild boars. Due to the lack of natural predators, the number of wild boars has been increasing over the past few years. Today, there are about 150,000 wild boars in Tuscany and some of them cause a lot of damage to the agricultural industry. I heard people here say that about 110 pounds of wild boar needs about 4,000 to 4,500 calories a day. Why in this area do cornfields suffer the most serious damage every year? The first reason is that the average calorie content of corn is about 7.9 calories per pound which helps wild boars stay full for a long time and not spend too much effort in finding food. The second reason is that the corn fields are large and the height of the corn plants can cover and protect the wild boars from farmers. These are reasons that create opportunities for wild boars to invade. So if you have any other reasons, please comment below to let farmers in other areas know how to deal with this harmful animal. According to our report by the local government of Tuscany, Italy, the damage caused by wild boars to the agriculture industry, specifically to cornfields, amounts to millions of dollars each year. More serious consequences are when they invade cornfields. During the harvest season, people's health can be threatened while harvesting corn in the fields. Therefore, when you go to work in the fields, pay close attention to avoid the sudden attack of wild boars from the inside of the field. From the above actions of the wild boar, Italian people have faced many challenges from the journey to protect cornfields to on to deal with wild boars. Don't take your eyes off the screen. Next, I will take you on the farmer's hunting journey here. So comment number one if you're ready. And let's continue watching. Wild boars hunting in Tuscany is the most traditional hunting activity in Italy and, and one of the most exciting things that you can experience. Therefore, before participating in hunting trips, you need to have a hunting license to ensure your safety and have knowledge about the characteristics of wild boars. The type of hunting license that Italians often use is at the Ministero della Palacci Agricole Alimentari e Forestale, which is the nationwide hunting licensing agency. The penalty for illegally hunting wild boars in Italy will be the confiscation of hunting equipment. In serious cases, hunters can be imprisoned for up to two years. In addition, people who do not have a hunting license will have to pay a compensation fee from 10,000 to 6,000 euros. So if you don't want to be fined or do not want to lose money, I advise you not to venture out on the hunt yourself. Comment number two, 
if you are licensed to hunt. Unlike other countries, Italy uses helicopters in the wild boar hunting journey. In the United States, the government only licensed certain states to use helicopters for hunting. However, the cost is higher than traditional methods such as walking and using hunting dogs. Italian hunters think this method is the most effective and saves time and effort. The cost of renting a helicopter for a day of wild boar hunting can range from $2,000 to $5,000. So why do some people think that the method has high costs? Because of the convenience of this vehicle, this type of helicopter is equipped with an overhead observation system to help hunters quickly determine the location of wild boars. During the hunting process, there is a seat belt that keeps the hunter firmly seated in the plane, and when taken down from above, will avoid the problem of wild boar attacks. At the same time, helping hunters reach remote, hard-to-reach locations will cost more due to fuel consumption and long flight times. You need to pay attention to this, as if you don't want to lose a lot of money. You'll have to. My dear beloved audience, if you found all of these information useful so far, please show us some love by giving us a like to help us bettering our content. In addition, Italian hunters also hunt with bows and arrows. The hunter must face challenges and venture through the jungle and swamp areas. Unlike using helicopters to reach targets, Using bows and arrows requires patience and flexible movement skills in natural environments. So when facing wild boars, using bows and arrows becomes more difficult, especially when taking them down. This requires highly specialized skills and a deep understanding of wild boar characteristics and behavior as well. So moving on complex and difficult terrain areas requires the hunter to have a good knowledge of the terrain. An indispensable part when hunting using bows and arrows is preparing bait for the hunt to be effective and to attract the attention of wild boars to the area of the hunter has prepared in advance. Before you understand in another way, to ensure the hunter's safety from being attacked by them while hunting. Bait containers are often placed high up, and in about three to four hours, they will automatically release the bait to the ground to attract the wild boars. The hunter will prepare the corn laced with scent. These impregnations do not harm animals, as they only have the effect of creating scent, so they are very safe. Understanding the behavior and eating habits of wild boars is an important factor to help optimizing the hunting performance. In Italy's farming community, the use of hunting dogs and combating wild boars faces strong opposition. Most people here consider dogs to be loyal companions and family members, not hunting tools. This is because the relationship between humans and dogs has existed for a long time. In Tuscany, Italy, an outrageous incident occurred when a group of hunters organized hunting dogs and wild boars. More than 10 hunting dogs were attacked by wild boars in the process.
This incident caused outrage in the community and led to protests against hunting with dogs. The protesters demanded an end to dog hunting and respect for their views on the relationship between humans and dogs. So the real question is, do you support stopping hunting with hounds? If you agree, please comment number one below in the description. And if you are an animal lover, please comment your thoughts below as well. What do you think about the fact that Italian people do not use hunting dogs during hunt? Comment number one if you agree with the above action. And comment zero if you feel like wild boars are harmful to cornfields and needs to be dealt with ASAP. And finally, thank you so much for watching the whole entire video. Click the like button now and subscribe to the channel to watch the latest videos about dealing with wild boars. The question here is, why do wild boars move to urban areas? Someone said that about 10 years ago, there was a man walking through the forest. He encountered a wild boar in the way and fit it. This action of his opened the door for wild boars to approach the city. Wild boar feeding in the city is happening a lot. Therefore, the first thing is not to feed wild boars. Feeding wild boars in the city is strictly prohibited so that bad things don't happen. In addition, houses and areas where people live should build fences to prevent wild boars from entering people's houses. This man told us about wild boars appearing around his house. They travel in search of food, causing destruction to the surrounding environment. He immediately bought materials to build a fence around the house. This fence can not only prevent wild boars from entering, it can also prevent many other species from attacking his house. Simply using wood to make them, the price is quite cheap compared to some other types of fences. Besides limiting wild boars' intrusions, this wooden fence also carries a series of other benefits. First of all, using wood as the main material helps minimizing the impact on the environment such as using materials as metal or plastic. It also promotes the regeneration of wood trees, helping to protect forests and meet environmental protection goals. Not only that, the flexibility of wooden fences also allows for easy replacement and maintenance when needed. This means saving time and money in maintaining infrastructure. Keeping dogs in the family isn't only a safety measure for your home and security, but also a form of creating a special bond between humans and your pets. Dogs are always loyal companions always ready to protect and care for their families. Taking your dog for a walk in the evening not only creates a good opportunity to relax and enjoy natural spaces, but is also especially useful in protecting against wild boar attacks.
they have the ability to be alert and detect the presence of wild boars before you, allowing you to take timely preventative measures. Furthermore, they also demonstrate patience and concern for you when wild boars approach your home area. They will bravely face this threat and will not hesitate to chase them away, protecting your space from encroachment by wild creatures. In some areas of the city, many people raise wild boars as pets. They feed them milk and family foods. Moreover, they also let them rest and live in their house. And sometimes, this could be a little dangerous for the family. There are species that live in herds. If they are unlucky, they will smell the characteristic scent of pigs in your house and come towards you. Although it may feel very familiar to raise wild boars and treat them like family members, remember that they are wild and their nature is still in them. In a moment, they can turn into a dangerous threat, especially when they feel hungry or excited by the smell of food. Keeping wild boars indoors isn't only dangerous, but can also disrupt the harmony of their environment and affect their naturalness. Therefore, wild boars should not be raised under any circumstances. If wild boars appear around your area, immediately report them to the police. The police will come and deal with this dangerous threat. Someone told us one day that a very large wild boar appeared in the park and they took over the sand as their resting area. The surrounding people were very scared and called the police. They came and solved the problem. They chased them away from residential areas, ensuring people's safety. This clearly shows the importance of maintaining cooperation with authorities. The police are always ready to respond to dangerous situations, protecting the community from unforeseen threats. However, warning and creating information about the appearance of wild boars also plays an important role. When we work together, we have the ability to create safer environments for everyone. The encroachment of wild boars into cities is largely due to humans. You need to be very careful when handling household waste. Do not throw trash in such public places as they will attract wild boars and wild boars will pollute the area immediately. Do not go alone in areas where wild boars often appear. It is very dangerous for you. If there are any measures that I haven't mentioned, please comment them down below in the comment section to let us know. And for now, let's continue watching the rest of the video. The growth of Australia's red fox population has created a challenging story while also dramatically changing the country's ecological landscape. 
It was first introduced in 1859 by English shepherds. The red fox was expected to play a role in controlling agricultural pests, such as rats and rabbits. However, the reality has shown that the red foxes not only adapt to new environments, but also grow at amazing rates, creating major challenges for Australian communities and ecosystems. According to Australian government estimates, the red fox population currently stands at around 23 million, a staggering number equivalent to approximately one fox for every two Australians. Their growth rate is uneven and rapid, with an increased rate of up to 100-fold in the 100 years since their introduction to Australia. The red foxes are widely distributed across mainland Australia and exists of all types of habitats, from forests and savannas to deserts and coastal areas. These areas are famous for their growing agricultural economies, full of plants, rodents and birds. The abundance of food and favorable habitats makes red foxes like to live and hunt here. Big cities like Melbourne, Brisbane, Sydney and Perth are not only crowded with people but also an ideal environment for red foxes. Highly population density, food diversity and urban environments creates an interesting homeland for this animal. Pre-urban areas around big cities are a wonderful combination of urban and nature. Trees, bushes and other plants creates a diverse and attractive habitat for red foxes. Abundant food from garbage and small animals makes this area an ideal place to live. In addition, there are other special areas in Australia where red foxes often gather, such as agricultural areas in Victoria State or suburban areas in Sydney and Melbourne. These locations all have unique environmental characteristics, creating a favorable condition for the life and reproduction of red foxes. These lands are not only where red foxes live, but also a symbol of harmony between the city and nature, demonstrating the class and diversity of the green continent, Australia. Due to the development of wild rabbits, red fox populations have strongly invaded Australia. As of now, the wild rabbit population in Australia is becoming increasingly strong. The red foxes, being omnivorous, often eat wild rabbits. Each year, a red fox can consume about 10 wild rabbits. This makes wild rabbits the main food source for red foxes in Australia. In particular, with rabbit reproduction and a lack of natural predators, the red fox population in Australia has increased sharply estimated to be about 23 million according to the Australian government. This increase is posing serious challenges to Australia's ecosystem, including risks to native animals and natural landscapes. Dealing with invasive fox populations has many limitations. One of the greatest risks of day hunting is the danger it posed to both the hunter and others in the area. Target identification in daylight can become difficult, 
increasing the risk of accidentally shooting another person or an animal. This posed a significant challenge to the safety of everyone participating in this activity. In addition, the use of hunting equipment during hunting also creates negative impacts on the environment. Pollution and effects on natural ecosystems are inevitable. This disturbance can have a huge impact, affecting the natural balance and reproduction of many types of animals and plants. In Australia, red fox populations are facing pressure from hunting and human encroachment, with approximately 500,000 hunters involved in hunting red foxes. This number is still not enough to effectively control this population. This poses a challenge to manage and protect red fox populations, an important part of the Australian ecosystem. The skills required to engage in invasive fox hunting requires intense attention and concentration on the part of the hunter. Safe and accurate gun handling skills, observation skills to detect targets, along with the ability to move safely in a forest environment, are important factors. In addition, having a hunting license from the Australian government is also mandatory. Regulating the use of guns and ammunition as well as safety rules when participating in hunting activities. The number of foxes a hunter can hunt each day varies depending on their geographical area, despite the high flexibility. The limits of the number of foxes a hunter can hunt in a day are intended to maintain balance and not unduly impact the red fox population. Hunting with foxes at night has become the Australian government's management strategy for invasive fox populations since the 1950s. However, this practice faces many difficulties and limitations, making management difficult. Hunters who are allowed to do this often choose at time at night because red foxes are often most active at this time. They use flashlights to search for and approach targets, carry out hunting or capture foxes. However, these efforts face major problems and limitations. One of the important limitations is that hunting at night is not very effective. Work is limited to reducing a small portion of the red fox population. The decrease in efficiency occurs due to the fox's ability to reproduce rapidly, making it possible for them to regenerate vigorously after each hunting campaign. Not only that, but the use of guns and traps during hunting not only endangers the hunter but also negatively affects the environment. Environmental pollution from the use of guns and ammunition is a challenge facing the Australian government. By 2023, the number of red foxes in Australia has increased from 2 million in 1950 to 23 million. This significant increase indicates that hunting at night is not sufficient to control invasive fox populations. This poses a major challenge and requires creativity in developing more effective management strategies. Waru the wild boars has become the most invasive species in Canada. Let's continue watching to get to know exactly why. Why is the camel population growing so rapidly? 
camels were first imported to Australia in the 1840s for use of free transport and tourism. Camel numbers increased rapidly during this period, with an estimated 100,000 camels by 1900. During this time, camels remained important contributors to the human food chain. The motorized transport replaced camels for transportation. Many camels were released into the wild then. Camel numbers increased rapidly during this time period, with an estimated number of 2 million camels by 1950. Camels are herbivores and they can eat a lot of grass. This can lead to land destruction, reducing soil quality and making it difficult for native plants to grow. Camels also compete with native animals such as livestock, for food and water. This can lead to a decline in the number of native animals. Camels sometimes roam on highways and cause traffic accidents as well. According to a report by the Australian Wild Camel Control Authority, referred to as the DCMA, there are about 100 to 200 traffic accidents caused by camels in Australia each year. These accidents often occur in the central and northern regions of the country, where many wild animals live. About 10 people have not survived traffic accidents caused by camels in Australia since 1980. This can be dangerous for people and animals as well. To control invasive camel populations, Australian farmers use hunting. Camel hunting in Australia is often carried out by using off-road vehicles and hunting equipment. This process not only requires the ingenuity of hunters, but also possess many safety and ethical challenges. Hunters use all-terrain vehicles to browse the land, looking for camel tracks and signs. When they spot camels, hunters approach them carefully before using hunting tools to catch them. During hunting, ethical management plays an important role in controlling the number of camels hunted is extremely important to avoid damage to the environment and other animals. This helps maintaining natural balance and prevents overhunting. After shooting them down, the hunters collected the camel carcasses and brought them back for processing and use. The camel will be hung on the vehicle's crane. Next, several Australian hunters will work together to separate and harvest the camel's leg parts. This process will be done quickly and carefully to ensure the quality of camel meat. The process is truly cruel for this wild animal sometimes. However, this is a countermeasure licensed by the government in Australia. Harvesting camel meat can also provide for people. Wild camel meat in Australia is quite expensive, three to five more expensive than the cattle. This camel thigh meat will be brought to the transport area to be separated into parts. Then the meat and bones will be harvested separately. On average, each camel leg weighs about 198.42 pounds. It is very heavy compared to other species.
Every day, a group of hunters in Australia can shoot down 100 to 20 camels. However, to face the problem of overpopulation, control measures have been implemented. Data from the Australian Wild Camel Control Authority shows that the camel population has dropped to around 1 million by 2023. Camel meat can be prepared in two different regional dishes in Australia. In addition to applying hunting measures, another solution being implemented today is to bring wild camels to livestock farms. Helicopters and all-terrain vehicles play an important role in this process. They are used to gather camels to a certain area where they will be then transported to the livestock farms. This process not only helps minimizing encroachment from camel populations, but also creates opportunities for them to be managed more effectively. Transport vehicles, including trucks and planes, play an important role in moving camels from the wilderness to farms. Here, they will be cared for, raised and strictly controlled to ensure that they do not pose a danger to the environment and humans. According to a report by the Australian Wild Camel Control Authority, currently Australia has established about 100 camel farms. These farms are mainly concentrated in the central and northern states, regions where wild camels' populations are particularly large. So since these solutions have been affecting in preventing the growth of colonies of some invasive species, do you believe in any other better solution? If so, please don't forget to share your comments and opinions down below. Plus, don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to support our channel with our upcoming videos. And lastly, don't forget to share this video with all your friends so that they can watch it and enjoy it as well.